Hello, I'm Hayden Rogers, and this is an appendices episode to episode one, Kill My Story, about author J.R.R. Tolkien. These appendices episodes give me a chance to research and explore facets of the fantasy adventure genre, as well as the careers of well-known fantasy adventure authors, their writing styles, and the lessons they have to teach us about writing and the genre. J.R.R. Tolkien is best known for his novels The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings trilogy, as well as The Silmarillion. The Lord of the Rings has been translated into around 50 different languages and has sold at least 150 million copies worldwide. It is one of the top 10 best-selling series of all time. Firstly, let's look at Tolkien's style. Tolkien's writing is highly detailed, but the language is relatively simple especially in The Hobbit, which was originally written as a story for his children. When it comes to The Lord of the Rings, his style becomes grander as he writes in the epic, high fantasy style. Sometimes his writing takes on qualities not unlike an historical account. He presents his world as fact and without whimsy. The breadth of his world building is enormous, stretching across thousands of years of fictional history and the larger universe of Aya. This style is very much a product of the man. As I mentioned in episode one, he was a gifted linguist. Tolkien's mother taught him Latin, French, and German, and while at school he was either taught or taught himself Greek, Middle English, Old English or Anglo-Saxon, Old Norse or Old Icelandic, Gothic, Modern, and Medieval Welsh, Finnish, Spanish, and Italian. He also had a working knowledge of Serbian, Russian, Swedish, Danish, Norwegian, Dutch, and Lombardic. With all of this linguistic prowess, he was able to create 14 different languages and alphabets for Middle-earth. Tolkien spent his life as a scholar. Along with the languages, he was very knowledgeable about European cultures and their myths and legends. Tolkien worked on translating many archaic English works of fiction or lore, such as Beowulf and Sir Gawain the Green Knight, He also worked on the Oxford Dictionary, and was a university professor for most of his life. It's supposed Tolkien largely created his fictional universe in order to develop his own mythology and legend. In fact, his invented languages and creatures are all based in existing European cultures. The map of Middle-earth is intentionally reminiscent of Europe, with Tolkien's mythology as an alternate history of Earth set around 6,000 years ago. Even the term Middle-earth is based on the term Midgard from Norse mythology, which referred to the material world. When asked to write a sequel to The Hobbit, Tolkien initially put forward his encyclopedic work The Silmarillion, which presented a detailed history of the universe of Aya, of which Middle-earth is but one of four lands. Some fun facts. Tolkien delayed the publication of The Lord of the Rings because of a dispute over ink colours. He was going to leave his publisher, Alan and Unwin, because another publisher would use the red ink he wanted. He had made a plan that whenever the writing on the ring would appear, it would be printed in red. However, that deal fell through and he stayed with his original publisher. He was also part of a group of writers, which he co-founded, called The Inklings. Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, Charles Williams and Owen Barfield met every Tuesday for lunch at an Oxford pub called The Eagle and Child and read each other pages from their books. In fact, he and C.S. Lewis were the best of friends. So, what can we learn from J.R.R. Tolkien? Number one, let your interests drive your writing. Tolkien put a lifetime of experience and scholarly knowledge into his world building. He used his expertise to his advantage. How can the things you're passionate about influence your writing? Number two, you never know what might happen. Tolkien never tried to be a fantasy author. His first novel, The Hobbit, was never written with the intention of being published, but rather as a story for his children. However, he became incredibly popular and revived the fantasy genre, a revival that has realistically been responsible for the creation of every other fantasy novel I've read, not to mention games like Dungeons and Dragons and countless movie and TV plots. Number three, details fascinate us. I would attribute much of the success of The Lord of the Rings and Tolkien's other works to the realism and complexity of the world. 
we love to learn about the worlds we read, and we love to ask why they are the way they are. Thank you for listening. Please find Kill My Darlings podcast on social media for any comments or corrections, or just to follow along and say hi. And a reminder, if you haven't listened already, to check out episode one, Kill My Story, where I talk about the initial concepts for my fantasy adventure world and read a short story to test them out.